This video is starting off more or less right where the previous one ended. We're in part 110, chap 12, then 11.m. Link to that file is in the video description. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about three-dimensional arrays or larger, more dimensions, if you like. Now, throughout this video, I'm going to be using the analogy of pages and books. And what I mean by that is, if you think of a sheet of paper, maybe with grid lines on it, as a two-dimensional matrix, right? It's got rows, it's got columns. Well, then you can think of a three-dimensional matrix as a stack of papers or a book. In this code right here, just as an example, I'm creating four two by three matrices. So the first one, numbers one through six, second one, same numbers times 10, and then that one times 10, and then that one times 10, but it ran off the page a little bit. And then in this code down below right here, I'm going to put those four different two-dimensional matrices together into a stack, into a little four-page book, and that's going to be my three-dimensional matrix. I simply named it my 3D array using underscores. This is not a built-in function. This is a variable name. I could have named it A, B, C, X, Y, Z, whatever. But check out what happens next. This is array indexing in the fashion that I've been doing throughout this video series. What we're saying here is all rows, comma, all columns, comma, page one is going to be this first matrix, this data right here. And then in the next line, I say all rows, all columns, page two is going to be this matrix right here. And then so on for page three, and then so on for page four. When I display out my three-dimensional matrix, since I'm looking at this on a more or less flat screen, it's just going to show all the separate pages. So this is what got displayed out by that display right there on line 758. It just displays, oh, here's page one, here's page two, and so on. Indexing works exactly the same in 3D as it does in 2D. There's just a third number. So if I want first row, second column, third page, I just put in parentheses after my variable name, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to run this code here. All right, and that is the number 200, right? So I'm going to start with page 3. So this is page 3 right here, row 1, column 2. There's the 200, and in fact, there it is right there. If I ask the built-in size function, what's the size of this variable? Well, I do need to set three variables equal to it because I'm going to get a third result because there are three values for the size. There's the number of rows, there's the number of columns, and there's also the number of pages. And pages is not like a technical term. It's just a metaphor that I'm using here. If we think of rows and columns on a flat sheet of paper, pages are the papers stacked on top of each other. There's a third dimension. And I think it's a really good metaphor because it's really easily extended at least a few dimensions more. Because if you want a fourth dimension, well, what can you think of that as? Well, you can think of it as multiple books. So I run this code here, and I'm going to create a four-dimensional array. All the rows, all the columns, all the pages in book one are going to be just copies of my 3D array. And then all the rows, all the columns, all the pages in my second book are going to be that same 3D array times a half, just because I wanted something to use there. I can display it out. It's a bit cumbersome. Uh, I do have it in the command window over here, but it's displaying out every single page of every single book. It's a little bit much, but there it is. And if I ask the size function, what is the result of, what's the size of my 4D array? Well, it gives me four numbers, basically saying there are four pages each with two rows and three columns across two books. And like I said, that metaphor, at least for a few more dimensions, I think is relatively easy to visualize. So the fourth dimension, right, is a group of books. What if I need a fifth dimension? Well, then I might have multiple shelves, each of which is numbered, each of which has their own books. What if I need a sixth dimension? Well, then I have multiple bookshelves, each with their own shelves. What if I need a seventh dimension? Well, now I have maybe multiple libraries, each containing many bookshelves. And you can see how it could go on from there. Many different libraries in many different cities, on many different planets, in many different galaxies. I don't know. You could go up and up and up. So this comes from the book MATLAB for Engineers 5th Edition. It's kind of more of the same, but I'll, I'll run it and talk you through it anyway. So I create three different matrices here, a magic matrix, a zeros matrix, and a matrix full of ones. And I put them into a new 3D array. Again, this is just a variable name. It is not a function. 
Alternatively, we could just set those values equal directly to the functions, right? That's just a substitution. This is just as good and perhaps better. Here's just a little exercise. Write code to display the value in row 3, column 2 of page 1. You just use the variable name, and then 3 for the row, 2 for the column, 1 for the page. Now after that, things get a little bit more interesting. So here, find all the values in row 2, column 3, all pages. Well, for that, I can say, all right, row 2, column 3, colon, to represent all pages. And if I run that one, there's the 701 that I get right there. We can check it. Scrolling up just a little bit. All right, row 2, column 3, that's the 7. Row 2, column 3, that's the 0. Row 2, column 3, that's the 1. Perfect. How about this next one? What if I want all the values in all the rows and pages just of column 3? Well, I say all rows, column 3, all pages. All right, and I display them out right there. So this is column 3 of page 1. This is column 3 of page 2. This is column 3 of page 3. And I'm displaying them out by, by compressing it into a single vector. Uh, that's important, because suppose I didn't do that. Suppose I just look at V. Well, V is actually a little bit awkwardly organized. So it's still got three pages, and on page one, it's just the first column. It's just that one column that I extracted. Sorry, not the first column, but column three. On the second page, it's just the third column that used to be on the second page. And then on the third page, same thing. There's a function built into MATLAB called squeeze that will eliminate so-called singleton dimensions from multidimensional arrays. Because basically, in this V that I've got right here, I'm not really making use of the columns, because in every single page, there's only one column. So anyway, right here, I'm going to run an earlier example where I got a particular value from every single page and run that. And it actually shows up as one single number on every single page. That's kind of silly. Why don't we just make it one row or just one column? So that's what the squeeze function will do. So after I apply squeeze to this vector v, I get a better v, which is just going to have three rows, one column of all that data. And if I run the size function on it, now I see it's a 3 by 1 instead of a 1 by 1 by 3. So that may be useful uh, if you're reducing the dimensionality of uh, some data, you're only extracting certain rows or columns or certain pages or certain books or certain shelves or bookshelves or libraries. And here's one more example of squeeze. So the all rows, column three, all pages. So I'll run this one. And so initially, this is how it displays out right there. And I run the size function, and it says three rows, one column, three pages. But after I run the squeeze function right here, well, then it's just a matrix. Three rows, three columns, size is a three by three. It is changing the organization of your data. So if that's not what you want, then don't do this. But in many cases, it is what we want. So, and then there's another question from the book, MATLAB for Engineers, 5th edition, and I'm just going to run through a solution to it using the squeeze function here. So it asks us to create these three arrays. So great, there I created those three arrays. And then it asks us to combine them into a 2 by 2 by 3 matrix named ABC. Okay, so I name it ABC, all rows, all columns, page 1 is going to be A, and so on with 2B, 3C. All right, there it is. There it displays out. And then... I'm going to just compare and say, hey, by the way, this is the same as using this cat function. This is a built-in MATLAB function where I'm going to concatenate these three matrices into a three-dimensional uh, new array. So this right here is the same as this right here. Continuing on down, it asks me to extract each column one, every single column one on every page, into a two-by-three array named uh, this right here. All right, so I create that variable name. Set it equal to ABC, all rows, column one, all pages. But that's not the same as squeezing it. So initially, I get this right here. The dimensions are two rows, one column, three pages. But after I run the squeeze function, I instead get two rows, three columns. You can learn more about the squeeze function or any function using help and then the function name. I'm going to continue onward with this example. So the next part asks us to extract each row 2 into a 3 by 2. So initially I might say, okay, from ABC, give me row 2, all columns, all pages. But that's not actually what I want. It's not actually what the question asks for because it's not a 3 by 2. 
Once I squeeze it, it's a two by three, and then I can transpose it to get a three by two. So this is just making us practice some various matrix manipulations. All right, last part here. Extract the value in row one, column two, page three. Again, it's just reminding us, hey, we can just index in as we would index with a two dimensional array or matrix. It's just we're having a third dimension, a third number separated by commas in there. And that's the end of 3D arrays for this section. Uh, we're going to pick up in the next video with cell arrays.